Straight ahead on 7 News, it seems more students than ever are on Northwestern's Alva campus. 7 News' Jessica Binder visited with the administration to find out the numbers. On campus, parking is proving to be a big issue this semester. We will show you the reason why and how you can avoid it. And on 7 News Campus Watch, Sing Sing Lu will tell you all about the budget issue here at Northwestern and how, and how it could eventually affect you. Keep it here. 7 News starts now. Broadcasting from the campus of Northwestern Oklahoma State University, bringing you the area's latest news and sports, this is 7 News. Hello and thank you for choosing 7 News today. I'm Ashton Gamey. And I'm Austin Sterling. Our top story today takes a look at what appears to be an increase in the number of students attending Northwestern this semester. The semester is in full swing and people want to know how many freshmen or transfer students Northwestern has and what the enrollment numbers are like. 7 News reporter Jessica Binder has today's top story. Seems as if this year there are more students on campus than any previous year. Is that the case or does it appear that way? We went to Vice President of Student Affairs and Enrollment, Brad Franz, to find out. Uh, I feel very confident right now that our freshman class is going to be up. Um, all numbers are indicating that. We don't have the final numbers. One of our uh, issues we have is that the add drop date just ended uh, for adding yesterday and dropping ends um, uh, this weekend. So it uh, does leave that the numbers are really fluctuating right now as, as students are in and out of classes. Um, one reason I feel uh, uh, really good about this is we've had strong recruitment. Um, the economy right now is, is, is potentially uh, playing in a role. We're very affordable. Uh, so I think there's just a lot of factors that are possibly leading that we could have a very uh, uh, strong enrollment over the next uh, couple of weeks. The dorm count is up from last year. All freshman Ranger Connection classes on the Alva campus are full and nearly all general education classes are closed as well. Bradley Bullock is one of the many incoming freshmen at Northwestern. There's so many freshmen in, in Ahmet Hall, the dorm I'm staying in, that a lot of the kids like me and my roommate, we both uh, requested a private room. But because of all the freshmen coming in, they ended up putting us together. All my classes that I have, uh, there's pretty much no more seats left, so we're pretty, we're pretty full as far as all my, all, all my classes. If enrollment is in fact up, Mr. Franz advised me that it could be because of our affordable prices that Northwestern offers. Now back to you guys. Thank you, Jessica. We will continue to follow this story and we will update you whenever official numbers are released. People all over Northwestern's campus are talking about the idea that there seems to be an increase in students on campus. However, this increase seems to be causing a decrease in parking. For years, students have complained about parking, but now with a potentially larger incoming freshman class, parking is truly an issue. Keith Thomason has lived in Coronado for three years and says that in previous years, there was usually parking spots open, but now things have changed. It's packed, completely packed, okay. and it's very hard to find a parking space. Yeah. Parking has become such a problem that students will park just about anywhere whether it's handicapped spots or fire zones. Also seen them parking in the head residence spot. Northwestern's chief of police, Leroy Burke, says campus police only issued warnings the first week, but tickets are now being written. We have adequate parking if everybody will park where they're supposed to. Campus police will issue tickets with fines for the following. If you park in a handicapped parking spot without a handicap sticker, the fine is $50. Parking in a fire zone will cost $40. Parking in the wrong lot, $10, and parking without a decal, $15. Parked over at South Hall were two cars clearly resting in no parking zones. If the parking lot is extremely full and they park over one of the yellow lines, uh, yes, we've been taking it easy. We've just kind of ignored that kind of uh, problems. Okay. If they park in an actual no parking zone and they're blocking part of a driveway or something, they will get a citation. So, where do you go if there's nowhere to park? Keith Thomason has a suggestion. Well, nobody uses the tennis courts. Chief Burke says with a current decal, you can park in the over overflow parking lot south of Ament Dormitory and behind the Wellness Center. For the last several months, the economy has been bad around the country, and it is now beginning to affect Oklahoma and Northwestern. 7 News reporter Sing Sing Liu has more in today's Campus Watch. 
Well, the state of Oklahoma is starting to be impacted by the national economic situation. And with the federal budget cut, this summer Northwestern administrators have been busy making big decisions. In the beginning of this year, Northwestern was informed that there would be a cut in the budget. The main goal of the administrators when they found out about the cut was to not let this affect the students. Vice President of Administration David Pagey says the state's revenue dropped again from less natural gas production, which is causing further cuts to state agencies. State revenues for Oklahoma have been down, and last month our August appropriation was reduced by 5%. Currently, the university was able to absorb the uh, decrease for the month of August. Um, long term, we'll just have to wait and see what impact that will have on students, faculty, and staff. According to Peggy, the state took out around $800,000 from our budget. To make it up, Northwestern received about $800,000 in federal stimulus funds. So for now, this won't affect the students and faculty. I mean, college is pretty expensive as it is, and I think that's pretty nice. And that's one of the all-around reasons, I guess, people come to Northwestern, because it's like a family, of, and they care about the students. The Northwestern didn't cut <laughs> up the fees because it shows that they really respect the students, and I appreciate that a lot. Northwestern will only receive two years of the funds that the federal government is providing. So what will happen after the government stops making up the dollar amounts that the state cannot provide? Our stimulus money, we received half of the stimulus money this year, and we're to receive half of the stimulus money next year. The hope is that the state economy will turn around to offset the monies that we receive from the federal government. If Northwestern continues to have cuts, the university will be forced to reduce resources and evaluate open positions before they are filled. From Hare Hall, I'm Sing Sing Liu. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sing Sing. Administrators told 7 News they constantly monitor the budget situation and try to find solutions to the problem before it affects students. Passing the costs on to students would be a last resort. The, econo the economic situation was one item of discussion at a recent meeting in Alva. Representative Frank Lucas visited Alva as part of the town hall meetings this year. Each year, legislators hold these gatherings throughout their districts in order to hear from their constituents. This year, Alva was on the list of stops. I've seen some stats that there might well be two or three million people in this country, I know you may find this hard to believe, who can afford to buy insurance but just don't choose to spend the money on it. They choose to spend it on something else. So you've got a factory that you want to take care of that. There may well be somewhere, and it depends on states and how they handle their, their rules, but there may well be anywhere from 12 to 15 million illegals out there. Do you want to provide that as a part of the public system? You've got to decide that. Compared to town hall meetings held in other districts across the nation, this meeting was fairly mild. Lucas did say that the town hall meetings have brought out more people this year than in years past. He says major activity in Washington is the main reason for that. The H1N1 virus continues to weigh heavily on people's minds. Added attention is being placed on schools and universities because they may act as a major spread ground for the virus. The latest reports from the CDC say people between the ages of 5 and 24 are at the highest risk. To date, there have been no confirmed cases of H1N1 on any of Northwestern's three campuses. However, cases have been reported at other higher education institutions in our state, many at OSU and Stillwater. So what should you do if you think you have contracted the virus? According to the CDC, the following actions should be taken. If you are sick, stay at home or in your dorm room for at least 24 hours after you no longer have a fever. Cover your mouth and nose when you cough or sneeze and wash your hands frequently or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Finally, keep for space clean. Doorknobs, refrigerator handles, remote controls, and countertops are common areas where the virus can be. By keeping these areas clean, you ri your risk of being exposed goes down. On a final note, talk with your health care provider and find out if you should get vaccinated against the seasonal and the 2009 H1N1 flu. If you are at a higher risk of complications from the flu, check with your doctor before the, floor, before the flu season hits. The 2009 graduates of Northwestern's nursing program have set the bar high for this class of 2010. 100% of the graduates passed the National Council licensure exam. 
This test is required in order to become a practicing RN or practical nurse. 20 graduates from all three of Northwestern's campuses took the test. Chair of the nursing program, Dr. Carol McKenzie, tells us this is the first time since 1996 there has been a 100% pass rate. You might have noticed the big changes in the cafeteria and student center this year. Coming up on 7 News, we will show you the new facilities. And with the lively amount of changes this year comes new faces. Coming up, we will be in with information on the new faculty members. Keep it here. We'll be right back. You're watching 7 News, the number one collegiate newscast in Oklahoma. With Ashton, Austin, and Becky. This is 7 News. Global warming. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. child the start they need at bornlearning.org. kind of have that ADD thing to where I can't really pay attention that well. I might as well just drop out. So I bounced from like foster home to foster home. Dropped out of high school my junior year. I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. They join gangs, start doing drugs, try to sell drugs. It distracts you from everything around you. You're always having to watch your back. You can't really be yourself. The one person who really got me to go back into school was my mom, my mother. My parents were the people that helped me the most. I need them to know that it really does help me that they're there for me. Welcome back. Summers at Northwestern typically bring about changes on campus, and this summer was no different. Ten new faculty members joined the Northwestern community for the fall semester. Two new members joined the faculty in the School of Arts and Sciences, and eight work in the School of Professional Studies. Group picture of the new faculty members was taken during the new faculty orientation held the week before the fall semester began. Of the new faculty, two of them were brought into chair departments. Dr. Sean Holliday is the new chair of the English, Foreign Language, and Humanities Department, and Dr. Steve Palmer is the new chair of the Business and Commerce Department. Other positions filled included a new director of bands, an instructor of nursing, three business positions, a health and sports science education position, and an appointment in psychology. There was also the appointment of an instructor of agriculture education. This, this position develop, developed as a result of Northwestern's addition of an agriculture education program. Northwestern has been recognized once again for excellence in education. For the third consecutive year, Northwestern is the highest ranked public regional university in Oklahoma. According to the U.S. News and World Report, Northwestern is the only public regional institution in the Western United States to achieve third tier ranking, and all other institutions ranked in the fourth tier. Their ranking visit places Northwestern on the top 25 of all undergraduate colleges in the West. U.S. News also lists Northwestern as the second-ranked undergraduate college on the West in terms of least debt load of graduating students. The low amount of student debt also places Northwestern in the top 10 nationally in this category. In fall 2007, Northwestern announced that they were going to make changes to the athletic facilities. The campaign was coined Vision for Victory. Last spring, construction was started on the new athletic facility at Ranger Field. Northwestern's athletic director, Bob Battisti, is content with how construction is going. I think 
it will not be until after our season when it's completely finished, but it'll be usable for the first football game next Saturday, September 5th. Uh, we should be in both locker rooms by the second football game. So it, it'll be usable, but it will not be finished till probably sometime in November. This new facility is 50% bigger. It's about 10,500 square feet. Uh, modernized everything in it. Training room, weight training, strength training facility, uh, custom lockers. Uh, absolutely, our players are, are totally excited. Along with the new football locker room, there's also a new press box, public use facility, permanent seating, new dugouts at the baseball field, and a new indoor practice facility for both baseball and softball. We, we've got 75 lockers that we can sell. We've sold probably 25 or 30, so yeah, there's plenty of sponsorship space available for our lockers. Northwestern is still accepting donations for the Vision for Victory campaign. $4.5 million must be raised for all projects to be completed, which relies heavily on private donations. For Channel 7 News, I'm Becky Burke. For locker sponsorship, please contact Athletic Director Bob Battisti at 327-8632 or Director of Northwestern Foundation Skeeter Bird at 327-8593. Well, students were welcomed back to campus with a new look to some of the common areas students go. Coronado Cafeteria and the Student Center underwent a facelift over the summer. The new updated look not only brings a more pleasing space visually, but also new food options. Mondo Subs and Coyote Jacks are the two food concepts available in the Student Center. Coyote Jacks offers typical fried and grilled foods, while Mondo Subs offers fresh made sub sandwiches. We asked several students on campus what they thought of the changes. All students responded in a positive manner and say the changes improved the food service on campus. Coming up next, Becky is in with sports, and could Northwestern be moving from the NAIA to the NCAA? These stories and more stay with us. We'll be right back. Tick, 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 My name is David, and in eight years, I'll be an alcoholic. Hi, David. I'll start drinking in middle school, just at parties. But my parents won't start talking to me about it till high school. And by then, I'll already be in some trouble. Kids who drink before age 15 are five times more likely to have alcohol problems when they're adults. The thing is, my parents won't even see it coming. So start talking Who's next? before they start drinking. The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? What do you think he saw? The bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, the bear climbed over the mountain, and what do you think he saw? I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. The work was so hard. It was just going fast, fast, fast. I got kicked out of school, and nobody cared about me, so I don't care. I sort of got messed up into gangs and other stuff. School was very difficult. I was expelled from school. I mean, the one person who really got me to go back into school was my friend Kevin. At my friend's graduation, I'm going to be the loudest one there. Because if you don't have anybody while you're in school, then there's not really a way to get through it. And now, 7 News Sports with Becky Burke. Northwestern is creating a task force to review a possible switch in athletic affiliation from the NAIA to NCAA Division II. Northwestern Athletic Director Bob Battisti will chair the committee. 7 News' Austin Sterling reports. The NAIA is presently in talks with the NC2A even about a possible merger and we really want to get ahead of the curve. We're going to get together and decide what would be the pros and cons of going NC2A versus NAI. Okay. 
Due to NCAA regulations, the switch would allow Northwestern to compete in a number of new and different sports. The uh, NC2A requires uh, you to sponsor 10 sports, so the entire athletic program would move NC2A. Freshman basketball player Brandon Harris believes the switch would open the door to some sports Northwestern hasn't been accustomed to in the past. Uh, more sports, you know, more uh, kids from uh, Oklahoma that have to stay here and I have to leave to go to other states to play sports as far as like men's soccer. You know, we might get a men's soccer team, a track team, girls, for girls and boys, you know, swimming, rowing, all that would be a, an opportunity for uh, kids here in, uh, in this town. The possible switch also creates speculation that it would take some time to adjust to the higher level of competition that comes with the NCAA. It certainly will probably take us a while to become competitive as we adjust uh, any recruiting uh, uh, aspects and uh, uh, competition aspects to fit NCAA rules. Certainly we've seen a decline in football of the number of schools that participate. Schools that have had premier NAI programs that are going to the NCAA. Though there are many advantages to joining the NCAA, Northwestern has had a history of athletic achievements in the NAIA, and there are some who believe Northwestern should remain a part of its current affiliation. I mean, I like where we're at right now. NAIA is a, a very good level, very good association. I, I enjoy coaching in it, and I, I played in it. And it's, tough, it's, it's tough levels. We've obviously enjoyed a lot of success in the NAIA, and, uh, you know, we're going to continue to, uh, to look forward to having more success until uh, really the university determines what's the best course of action for us. Although there have been discussions in the past, the possibility of a switch to the NCAA is more probable now than ever before. It's, it's more serious now than it's ever been, Northwestern going NCAA too. The task force is expected to make a decision prior to December 31st. This past Saturday, Rangers soccer fell to East Central University Tigers in their season opener. East Central was the leader from the very beginning, scoring four goals, with the Rangers' lone goal coming from returning junior Christina Nunez. The final score was 6-1, to one, with the Tigers scoring two goals in the last 15 minutes. Coach Barrows is looking forward to the season. Barrows said he likes the makeup of his team. They are young, full of energy, and competitiveness. They now have more depth and more skill than the previous three years. He believes they're going to be an exciting team to watch. Their second game of the season is Wednesday, September 2nd in Hastings College in Nebraska at 2 p.m. Northwestern is set to kick off football season this Saturday at 7 p.m. against Colorado State University at Ranger Field. There are 105 players on the team this year. Several Rangers have returned to play for Northwestern again this fall, plus new recruits and incoming freshmen. Coach Bearfield said, if everyone stays healthy, keeps up the good effort and hard work that he has seen in preseason, the Rangers will win their share of football games this year. The Rangers will be playing at home for their second game of the season. The Rangers are set to face Black Hill State University on September 12th. Kickoff time is set for 1 p.m. Saturday afternoon. That afternoon is also Northwestern's Family Day festivities. Hard to believe it's football season already. I'm pretty excited. Like it wins homecoming. In about six weeks or so. It looks like we're going to have a good season. Good. All right. Thank you, Becky. Let's take a look at some upcoming events taking place. Panhellenic sorority recruitment is taking place in the Ranger Room of the Student Center. Ladies interested in being in the sorority should stop by for more information. And just a reminder, the first home football game is this Saturday at Ranger Field. The Rangers will be taking on Colorado State University at 7, Saturday evening. The department should be working on a new show this fall. What is it going to be? It's going to be Vietnam 101, The War on Campus. How many cast members? Um, about, we have about 20 or so. That's a lot. And when is that? The show, the first show is October 1st, followed by the October 2nd and October 3rd. Well, good. That's going to do it for us this week. Be sure and pick up a copy of this week's Northwestern News and join us again next week for all the latest campus news. We'll see you next time.